It's M Hotel. Peace, peace. Hopefully, I could be heard. And um, if someone in the chat can do me a favor and just um, confirm that I could be heard, and I'll just get this after party started. So um, I'm gonna assume that I could be heard and just keep on talking. But this is your brother Wujao Maneb Ma'at, and you are on the Seshu Mani uh, Nature YouTube channel. And I appreciate anybody who's tuned in. So. I'm going to quickly dive in because I don't have much time. I, I just want to do a quick um, after party. So the panel link is in the, is in the chat. So if you want to come on the panel and, you know, voice your, your um, give some commentary about the presentation. So this is an after party of Asari Motep's presentation that he just uh, ended. You know, it was uh, um, an hour and 40, about an hour and 45 minutes long. So that's, that's really good. I, I think it's 45 minutes Um too long <laughs> only because you got to give only at one hour attention span to to um to to you know these people in the circus community you know anything over an hour you know you're gonna you're gonna lose the the, the attention um you know so but uh, keeping videos under two hours is, is really good um but under an hour is even better you got you gotta you gotta have these short things because the attention span is at an all the short attention span is at an all time high. You know, I mentioned that in the chat. But um so anyway, I just wanted to have a quick after party for his presentation to see what people took away from it. All right, so that's the purpose of me doing this. So I would like to hear from you, um, those who were able to check out uh the presentation, some of it, all of it, you know, doesn't matter. But I just want to hear from 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 you guys. What did you take away from the presentation? All right, so hop on the panel. You don't have to have your camera on or anything like that um, if you don't want to. But the panel link is is pinned in the chat. So come in the, come on in the panel and um, share your thoughts. All right. So I'll start with um, a few words first, um, and I'll, I'll monitor the chat because you know for for um, whatever reasons. You know, people who, you know, any other time, you know, I, I used to think that people would would uh, kick and scream to try to get on the panel and get on, you know, get on the platform, get on the panels and stuff on, on these things. But, you know, I was wrong because when I post the panel link, maybe it's just our channel. Maybe it's maybe it's me or our channel and people don't don't want to do it. And I hope. Cause I'm I'm not I mean I'm 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 very easy, uh, person, so you know I'm not I don't I'm not, I don't attack people I don't you know I don't curse people out I don't call people out of their name, you know none of that stuff on the panel like that's just not that's just not in my behavioral vocabulary, but um but I man I gotta like pull people to come on the, on the panel but anyway I, I I wish some of you would come on the panel just just um. Give your thoughts, you know, share your thoughts on the presentation. And I'm going to start with 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 myself. And let me just check out the chat. Let me let me pull up the chat. You know. Because, you know, I don't I, I, I pay attention to the chat when it's, um you know, needed, but especially during presentations. Like, really, I mean, you think about it. Um, If this was an in-person thing and and you're and you're at a presentation and somebody the professor or somebody is up front giving a presentation the crowd should not be talking among themselves i mean that just doesn't happen so i know for me when i when i see people do presentations and i see the chat lit you know people having conversations all throughout the chat and everything you know, that's odd to me. I mean, I understand because this is this is um, digital and virtual and social media. So I, so I see the capability of chatting and not being disruptive to the presenter, because if you're chatting the presenter, we could just anybody pres giving a presentation or talking on the on their YouTube channel. You can just ignore the chat. So it's not this distracting. Um, a side note, it is a distracting distracting to to some people who pay attention to the chat and can't even finish their thought without getting caught up and and buttons pushed to yell at somebody in the chat 
So it's never good to monitor the chat while you're getting given a presentation. Um, that's just a, a, um, a suggestion. Don't don't monitor the chat while you're doing presentations. When, finish your presentation, then hit the chat. Hit up the chat. Um, but yeah, I'm saying, you know, during a presentation, people shouldn't really be chatting like that though. Cause you should be paying attention, trying to learn something, trying to, trying to get the point that, that whoever's presenting has for you, whatever they're sharing, try to, try to get it and comprehend it. And it's unfortunate that people, um, many people don't do that. And so they halfway listen to a person's presentation and then they think they figured it all out. And then they go and do 20, 40 videos about the person's presentation misconstruing arguments, misquoting, putting words in, in mouths and not even getting the points. But yet the whole time they were chatty patty in the, in the chat, you know, not paying attention, trying to trying to do whatever. So anyway, um, so we got it. We got to be mindful of that. But I am trying to see. OK, there we go. Now I can see the chat. All right. So. All right, so my thoughts on the presentation. So I'll start because, cause, uh, <clears throat> so, you know, because people didn't um, don't want to come in the panel. So I'm going to I'm gonna get my thoughts. So Asar's presentation. So basically, uh, I forgot the title. Um, maybe somebody, somebody type the title of his presentation in the chat for me, please. Appreciate that. Do well for that. Because um, I want to quote the title so people who listen in to this a uh, quick after party will know what to look up on his channel. Uh, obviously, it's the, it's the most recent one now because he just ended it. But um, if they want to go back. Anyway, so my thoughts on his presentation, um, I think the presentation was um, great and concise and to the point. Um, and it made it made some key points that um, are in line with, you know, uh, the logic flow was on point and everything. But a key point that um, that I want to highlight is, and I think that it, it will get overlooked, is this. <clears throat> um, the ancient Egyptians referred to themselves as the Remetch, okay? Remetch Re Um And... You know, it's a fair amount of people that are familiar with that remage. Now, anybody who's who's been associated with me and and the Seshu Mani Better Nature as a whole, and 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 been been um, you know um, vibing for a while, they know that we deal with this all the time. But think about this: the remage called themselves the remage, or the ancient Egyptians called themselves the remage. That was their proudly worn national ethnic name now they 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 punt they play with that name you know in terms of uh the term itself with the word remi which is another egyptian word that means tears in terms of a noun but as a verb it means to cry the act of crying which produces tears and then tears itself becomes remi um, or remu, etc. So there's a play on the word remetch with the word remi to cry. And so that play on that word comes from their cosmogonical text, which um, is a myth or a figurative text that documents their uh, thoughts, hypotheses, and things about uh, and philosophy about how things come into existence. Okay, basically it's what we refer to today as cosmology. You got cosmogony, cosmology. And so in that text, they, re they refer to themselves as the remage that came from Remi, the Remi ni Ra, re the tears of Ra. So from Ra's tears, came the remetch and so there's where the play of the word is so you got remi which is the word used in the text for tears and then the remetch come up out of that all right so they come from uh the tears of ra now 
So here's the interesting point. We, we, we can line all that up, what I just said. We know that the Egyptians call themselves Remich. We, we know that they have solidified that name and anchored it into a, a figurative uh, cosmogonical, cosmological text of, of, of their own production. And here's what's interesting. The question, where in any Semitic territory Will you find the same name in whatever form, whatever uh, form by form? I mean, um, the way the word is uh, constructed, it's form. Where will you find Remich in any Semitic territory uh, related to that form of Remich? Because here's the thing. If a people, if the ancient Egyptians were Semitic in origin they would carry the 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 especially when it comes to identity and naming themselves they would carry the name of their origin some derivative some derivation in some form or fashion and so in asar's presentation um he pointed that out and mind you i even wrote in his chat that his presentation is uh and we, got, we have to do them every now and then. So I'm glad he did his presentation. And like I said, um, it, was short, it was short enough and concise enough. I think it's really, um, it's really good and it should um, um, be digested by, by more people. And every now and then we have to keep doing them. But his presentation is a repeat of pre presentations that he and I and uh, Brother Sanjetti ha have done independently and together you know, in various places on Facebook or whatever the case is. So this is nothing new, but it may be new to um, other people. And we raise these questions, you know, um, like that. And no one puts in the work to to solve the question, you know. So in his presentation, he showed that. And in showing that, he also showed where the name Remich is actually, where it actually exists, on the continent of Africa in its um, related forms, okay? Uh, in linguistics, we may refer to some of those forms as cognates of each other coming from some ancestral uh, family of language uh, languages. But nevertheless, they're cognates and they're related. They're genetically related to each other. When I say genetically, I don't mean DNA and RNA or biological genetics. I'm talking about linguistic genetics, you know, um, a lot of uh, linguistic term terminology and nomenclature. Um, well, I would say a lot, but some of the linguistic nomenclature in that field um, gets its uh, words from uh, biological uh, biology. Excuse me, like the word morphology, morph, um, genetic relationships, and and sister languages and and parent languages. You know, ancestry. So those terms um, are shared between the field of biology and the field of linguistics. So when I say genetic relationship, I'm not talking about um, biological uh, genetics. I'm talking about linguistic uh, uh, genetics. And there's a method. So in biology, in order to determine the relationship between two people, you analyze the DNA. And you compare um, aspects of the DNA to find matches to determine the the proximity of a relationship between two people. Okay, so between a parent and their child, that DNA and genetic relationship is going to be very, very prominent, very strong. Boom, you could tell. Uh, paternity tests do it all the time. All right. Um, well, so that's a process. Well, in linguistics, there's an equivalent process um, to make those determinations, and that is the, the historical comparative linguistic method. The historical comparative linguistic method where there's a certain procedure and steps that one must take in order to uh, see and know the relationship and the proximity of that relationship. If you skip that, you're not uh, you're not going to be able to determine uh, relationship same way. If you skip a DNA test, you're not going to know um, 
people's relationships in biology, you know, human relationships. All right. You know, um, somebody try to take somebody to court for paternity or uh, child support and whatnot. And there's doubt about whether the child is the father's or the mother's, uh, whatever the case is. What does the court order or what do you submit? You submit a paternity test, DNA test. So the same thing happens in languages. But anyway, long story short, um, you can find cogniz to the word remetch on the continent of Africa. And so in Asar's presentation, um, if I had more time, I would have uh, uh, found that spot in there and show it now. But in his presentation, he shows, so you had the word lomi, olomi, olumi, olome, and, and so on. Uh, I'm just going off the top of my head. So on and so on uh, throughout Africa. And you have to ask yourself, um, Oh, so here, here we go. Example. So you have Romi and Remech. You have Nue, Ram. You have Dinka, Ran. You have Afar, uh, Numu, Num. You have uh, Dinka, Ian, Beja, Raba, uh, Oromo. The very word Oromo um, is cognate with Remech. Uh, Somali, Lab, um, Mulumi, uh, Num, Lomi, Nlomi, Mulomi, Onomo, Remi, Rem and so on and so forth and and so if you go back to this presentation you'll see this now these form a pattern okay these names where you find them on the continent form a pattern okay and so that's very critical that's very key because a people will not take a leap out the window and just come up with a whole brand new concept out the clear blue a brand new name for themselves if they originated from a, a different um, family and stock of people. That doesn't happen. It only happens if the people like us, African-Americans here in America, we were kidnapped or the, or the people were kidnapped, robbed of their culture, robbed of their traditions, robbed of their language and robbed of everything like we were and brought somewhere else. And now we have to take on a new um, identity and, and go through a maturation of a new culture. That's the only time that happens in history. The Egyptians didn't do that. The Egyptians were not some kidnapped group of people that that got dropped off in the Nile Valley somewhere and they had to create a whole new identity for themselves. That's not the case. That's only happens to us. Uh, uh, and that's what makes us unique here in America um, as African-Americans. But that's a whole nother topic that I'm, I'm going to get into another time. But but that's an important point. So I want to I'm stressing that out. And, and and again, anybody can um, uh, come on, you know, come on on the panel and, and give your thoughts because um, I'm not going to be too long. So that's one point. OK, so another point um, to be made is uh, what was the other point? Oh, here's another uh, interesting or very important point to, to underscore and, and uh, outline is. The fact that um, the ancient Egyptians come from the south, okay, the the peopling of the Nile Valley came came the 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 population or the populating of the Nile Valley and its delta uh, came from different directions, okay. That's pretty much well established that people came in from different trajectories into that Nile Valley um, way, you know, way in the past, pre-dynastic, all right? Um, but what we know as Egypt, like when you say ancient Egypt, those concepts and ideas that, that, that trigger in your mind about ancient Egypt, that order, that organization, that structure, that um, statehood and administrative entity or polity that we call Kemet, or ancient Egypt, that came from the South. Okay? And that's a distinction and a difference that people often overlook and need to stop overlooking and make and consider it. Okay? It's two different things. It's one argument of the human bodies that occupy the Nile, the Nile Valley and its delta. Where did they come from? And we can argue that they came from multiple uh, places okay um 
But what we call Egypt, what we call ancient Egypt, its culture, its everything about ancient Egypt that you love and, 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 and people uh, romanticize about, commercialize about, that stuff, the goodies and all that stuff came from the South. That that organizing wave, that administrative wave, the kingship and all that structure, that administrative political structure it, as a policy that came from the South. Evidence upon evidence demonstrates that and supports that. And that's the conversation that people fail to have. People are so caught up on whether the Egyptians are black or white or black or not. Or whatever the case is, those are superficial arguments that really, at the end of the day, mean nothing. It's irrelevant. It really is. It's it's only relevant to a group of people that are long longing and yearning for some kind of identity, um, because we've been downtrodden or whatever the case is, and we want some kind of historical glory to to latch on to to be like see we're not so downtrodden after all we 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 are the makers the owners the cream of the earth and god of the universe you know what i'm saying the black man is god and this and that so that becomes very relevant in those conversations so there's there's been a, a decade after decade push to to make the egyptians black and then by making the egyptians black and we are considered black Therefore, if we're black, if A equals uh, B and, and uh, B equals C, then A equals C. So if we're black and the Egyptians are black, then dag on it, we are Egyptians or they are our ancestors. And see, that's how that conversation goes. And, and of course, I'm simplifying it, but that's how that conversation goes. And my stance is that all of that is superficial. All of that is, is irrelevant to any real body of knowledge or, or information that we can pull from ancient Egypt because for every argument you know we can just show that it, it really has no um no standing it really does it really doesn't uh the modern notions the modern social construct of race did not exist in the minds of people on the continent um in those times before those times and after those times it is a modern social construct uh, of race it's not based in biology there is no biological reality for race and, and in fact race in biology is used different than race in everyday um, conversations and in, in the social uh, setting all right so so that's different uh, as well but the point is is that ancient Egypt it's 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 entity as a po political state nation country kingdom that organization came from the south it was a it was a south to north movement it's it's, it's the material culture supports it the philological um studies support it with all the text and everything all right um as a sidebar side note um dr ben's claim that the egyptians said such in the papyrus who nefer that is incorrect no such statement is made in the papyrus who nefer okay in fact the statement that's that he quotes or that people quote um is not in any uh text no one can cite a source that says that or i should say no one has i'm not going to say no one can but no one has and it's been a long time <laughs> for people to have the opportunity to do so. But for sure, it's not in the Papyrus of Hunefer. I know that myself because um, I've done that work. Uh, it's not in the Papyrus of Hunefer um, at all. So, but to Dr. Ben's point, though, the statement is not found and it's, that's incorrect. But to Dr. Ben's overall point, he's correct. The the Egyptians, um, in terms of its polity, as I said, came from the south. All right. It came from the south. Um, and you know this by all the evidence. So I'm going to mention a couple of things. Um, Sesh Medunetcher, the, the hieroglyphic writing system. We see its origins in the south. 
we know that the um, oldest um, uh, the oldest forms of its writing is found in Abydos, which was Abju in the language, and south of that, okay, the the ivory tags that people are familiar with from um, the um, the team under uh, Gunter Dreyer, those ivory uh, tags uh, dealing with commerce and labeling um, are dated to uh, pre-dynastic rolling right into the dynasties of ancient uh, Kemet or ancient Egypt. And so you have those and those are located in tomb in one of the tombs in Abydos or Abju. Then you have the um, the um, the uh, cylinders, the custos, uh, custos uh, cylinders that have the um, iconography and and some of the the basic or or rudimentary uh, glyphs on it that's coming from that southern region. And so we really have to clear up this whole Egypt Nubia uh, false dic what is this this arguments that people are having this quarrel that people are having about egypt versus nubia and so on and so forth because it's damaging to what we can know and the body of language that's sitting right there in front of our face okay and and i always say this i have my stance and i've been unapologetic about everything i say that we got to drop the word nubian to to get to gain an understanding because the people that we're referring to never refer to themselves as nubians and the Egyptians never referred to, to the people south of them as Nubians. Once we get rid of that and we understand the proper terminology because we have access to it, then we can we can connect the dots. We can see that there was an area of convergence or this parent population, this, this ancestral and parent population and the territory where they lived. They lived in northern Sudan and southern egypt what on our maps today would be southern egypt and northern sudan okay the border between e egypt and sudan if you put that borderline going east to west in the middle of an of a north and south uh circle that area is the ancestral territory so that area includes upper egypt and lower Sudan, or what people like to call lower Nubia. So lower Nubia and upper Egypt is that overlapping territory of the parent um, and organizing uh, body or population or community. That's where kingship comes from. That's where uh, writing comes from. Uh, the Egyptian writing comes from. Um, the 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 um, kingship uh, structure, the whole thing comes from that. And then it moves up and as it moves up, it's organizing. Uh, smaller groups of people. Conquering, some people like to call it conquering, uh, referred to as conquering um, and some fighting may have occurred. Um, but eventually Egypt was united. In the territory that we know as as um, Egypt today. All right. And what it left behind is that people south of Egypt, uh, it caused it caused the upper Egyptians, which is south on the map, the upper Egyptians to eventually demarcate themselves from further south. And when that occurred, you had two contemporary um, kingdoms. So you had the Kerma uh, culture, you know, you have all that. And, and archaeolo archaeologists refer to the people in these areas, by the way, this is a by the way, um, the A, a group, uh, C group, you know, uh, Nubians, they call them A group Nubians or A group culture, C group and so on and so forth. And you're going to find all the stuff out. Just look, look, look into that stuff. But eventually what came out of all of this was Egypt was formed and then there was a, a demarcation made and then below that demarcation, then you have Kush, you have uh, Kerma, Kush, and then way later you have Napata, 
uh, uh, Meroe or Meroe, uh, which is called Mero, and so on and so forth. And so now when this, these things are discussed, people are arguing without doing the necessary work to connect the dots. They're arguing based on a superficial modern social construct of race. And they completely missing the boat. They completely missing the, the, um, the target on all of that. So anyway, so back to Osara's presentation. Um, so I think that it was important for him to show um, the, the location of Upper Egypt. Now, this was bringing me to my third, and this is, I'm going to stop here. Uh, and it, again, if y'all want to come on, if anyone will come on a panel, the panel link is, is in the, um, is in the chat. Hop on and share your thoughts. But, um, so the third point I want to highlight is when Asar, um, uh, showed in the Bible where Egypt is mentioned. Now we know Egypt is mentioned in the Bible, right? Um, the moment you, the moment you mentioned the word Bible, some people will just turn away. Oh man, the Bible ain't worth even quoting. Like, how you gonna deal with the Bible? The Bible is 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 trash. It's garbage. Why are you quoting the Bible? How you gonna use the Bible to justify anything real? The Bible ain't real. The stories ain't real. You know all that kind of stuff. And you know, to those people, those people are shallow. They too shallow to have a conversation. So if they, so if I ever, when I have conversations like that, and people um, react that way, and they turn away, I let them go. <laughs> I don't. I don't even beg them to try to stay around for the conversation because they already you know it's not worth the fight but there are some important points that are made in the bible egypt is referred to in several places in the bible we know in hebrew or in the bible it is referred to as mitzrayim um as as one of its names but then particular particular places are mentioned as well so you have um this place place that um osar had highlighted uh, Pathros, and and the word Pathros um, comes from the the native Egyptian word Pa Taresi. Okay, Pa Taresi. Pa meaning uh, the being the um, uh, definite article, and then Ta for land or region, and Resi, which which literally means the head, but in the context of being a toponym, it means um, the beginning location, the location of 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 the beginning which we translate as south so resi is translated as south because egypt has the beginnings in the south even in the words and names that alone supports what i said earlier so you have pata resi or pathos in the bible and so um in isaiah and uh, jeremiah and the quotes that asar gave it refers to um pathos as the ancestral land and so on and so forth so that was very important to to point that out um, in that context, because evidently the writers of Isaiah and Jeremiah, whoever they may be, were familiar with this, these places. They also mentioned a place called Noph, N-O-P-H, in Hebrew and in the Bible. That's Memphis. Noph is, is, a, is, a, um, is a, a relationship associated with the word nefer. Noph is nefer. And Memphis is called Men Nefer. That's the native name of Memphis. Memphis is the Greek uh, form. But it's Men Nefer, which is Memphis, which is a, a which used to be the capital of Egypt uh, during certain times. So that's mentioned. All right. But they're talking about southern Egypt. So they talk about um, uh, Cush. In the Bible as well. So you got Cush, you got Pathros, and all these different places. So that was um, also very interesting. And people are, um, don't understand or, or, you know, point those things out. All right. Um, what else can we say? Well, that's it. You know, like I said, I only, I only want to mention those three, but it, you know, he touched on many things. He showed statues and some of the carvings of the ancient Egyptians uh, that are um, conveniently avoided by people who are on the shallow side, who don't do this kind of work, who are not known to study the culture, the language, or any of that stuff. They shy away from certain statues and carvings and whatnot, which is in abundance. They, they, they ignore all of that, but then they 
they want to post some some um, late kingdom to the Greco-Roman Ptolemaic era uh, imagery <laughs> and Coptic imagery of the ancient Egyptians to make an argument that the Egyptians were white or that they're not black and stuff like that. And, you know, I did a show about Egyptians being black or white. Who cares to show how silly that whole thing is? It really is. Throw it in the garbage. You know, anybody bring that stuff around me, I'm, I'm taking it, I'm balling it up, ripping it up, and I'm throwing it in the trash in their face, period. Don't come around me with that silly stuff. The ancient Egyptians are who they say they are. They are the ancient Egyptians. If we want to bottleneck them into our modern um, lookership notions of race where, where people, uh, we categorize human populations based on how somebody looks, that's crazy because that's not how they did it. That's not how the people on the continent do it. That's not how indigenous people did it all around the world. You know, culture is king. It always has been. Culture is king. And all of the elements that make a culture a culture. So culture is like an umbrella term. And so there's a lot of elements of what makes up a culture. But culture has been king. And it's based on that where you get your ethnonym, your demon nims. And all these other nims, which means names, you get all these different names of identity, there's different layers of identity. There's a national name, there's an ethnic name, you know, and so on and so forth um, that comes with culture. And if we don't know these things, we're not going to be able to connect the dots. And so 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 this is what we have to do. And so Asar's um, presentation in a short span of time um, did that. Now, I noticed that it sounded like he was addressing some points that were made elsewhere and I'm not privy to the other videos that people are making. You know, he mentioned Zion Lex, uh, uh, did a video about Yahweh and, and, and I haven't even seen Asar's presentation on Yahweh because Asar went to, um, uh, another platform and did that presentation, you know, and I just don't get down with, um, with, uh, certain, certain, um, you know, platforms and stuff like that. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't encourage that, that kind of stuff at all. Um, and whatnot, that, that detrimental, uh, stuff that that's, you know, it's some pseudo, pseudo, um, educational things, but I'm gonna stop here, open up the panel. The panel's been open and I want to hear from y'all. If y'all don't have anything to say or, you know, what's your thoughts? And so now I can pay attention. I say I wasn't even paying attention to the chat. I'm not even presenting anything. I'm talking, but I'm not even paying attention to the chat. That's, you know, I didn't want to be thrown off on on uh, on, on on my um, assessment <laughs> of his presentation. So now I can pay attention to, attention to the chat, even though I have it on the screen. I wasn't even looking at it. But let me scroll up and see. And plus, you know, I, I want somebody to come in on the panel. All right, so let's see who we can get on the panel. Let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Hotep. Uh, yeah, this is Amy Kent. And yeah, I think um, you did a good job of summarizing everything that I was actually going to say with my take on it. Um, the only thing that wasn't on that list was um, the DNA part. Um, which was um, why we can't really rely on DNA, um, you know, knowing that uh, there isn't enough um, mummies collected, um, you know, uh, throughout the different um, times in ancient Egypt for us to even have that conversation. So even when you hear people talk about, you know, when these conversations come about and you hear uh, people put in their two cents about uh, DNA and, what, you know, what they know about DNA and put it into the conversation about um, uh, the rematch and, and, you know, who they are, you know, then you kind of just understand why that is just um, not really uh, any, you know, what any anything at all that particular um, conversation because um, most of the DNA collected is um, at a later stage, um, you know, um, uh, during the New Kingdom and all that. So, so that was actually good to because that that's one of the things that people tend to use a lot. So that was, um, you know, good for people to know that you know why that really can be used in this particular kind of conversation. So, but everything else I think you mentioned. Okay, yeah, that's good. I, 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 um, I forgot about the DNA uh, piece. And that's, that's another important point. 
um, the DNA, the DNA studies people like to like to quote from and, and cite. They're very limiting, you know. And what's crazy is that they admit the handicap and limitations of those studies within the studies themselves. You know, it's just that the headlines of social media blog posts and, and other websites that take the study and then create a blog article about it. They're the ones that click clickbait that bad boy and and title it something, you know, the ancient, you know, I, I, I would I wouldn't be surprised if you don't find a, a blog article saying DNA shows the ancient Egyptians to be white. You know, what I'm saying that would not surprise me. And then when you read the actual study. It says nothing of the sort. I've seen that with that. I've seen that with um, man, even on the on the tip on the on the tip of the vaccines and the and it's the coronavirus and stuff. These studies are so misrepresented in these blog posts and people swear up and down by these blog articles that quotes that that cite studies because they don't go to the actual study. And that's the problem. People want to microwave everything. We can't microwave. We need to throw the microwave in the trash. Let me find out who invented the microwave. I'm a, man. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We, we're gonna pay a visit to the inventor of the microwave oven, and 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 all of that. Cause man, I'm, I'm gonna go back to my. Uh, what was it called? Um, what do you call those dentists? TV dentists. At least go back to the TV dentist. Let's do away with the microwave. Let's go back to the crock pots and the, and the TV dentist where you got to stick your whole meal in the oven. <laughs> And boy, you, have you ever had a, a chicken pot pie from those TV dinners? You put it in the oven and it cooks it. Is it just me or does it seem like that chicken pot pie stays extremely hot for, for like half a day? Like you got to wait for it to cool off and you waiting like six hours for, the, for that bad boy to cool off. I don't know what those chicken pot pies was made out of, <laughs> but it, it definitely, definitely trapped that heat up in there. Um. Anyway, so I'm just killing time now. So listen, I'm not gonna be long. I can't be long. I gotta. I gotta go. I was hoping somebody else would come on the panel. Um. And let me just check with y'all. Um. Does the link work? Well, no. Nah, Emmycat's here, so link is working. So duh. All right. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's 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 grab some of these these chat comments. I'm going to grab some of these chat comments and let's see. Let's see what's going on here. All right. All right. All right. Um, let me work my way back. Let me go up as high as I can go. All right. Social comment. Uh, oh, let me give a shout out to everybody in the chat. So shout out to everybody in the chat. I see we got um, Mika, who was the first person up here. Asar, Asar tried to claim to be the first person, but Mika got him by, by a few seconds. Uh, you know, Mika be on it. Mika, Mika will be on it. I don't know. Mika, how come you don't hop on? Share your thoughts. Mika's probably at work. Let me call out some people. Brother, Brother Mathis, where you at? Click the link. Yuhu Drums, Hotep. Aaron Edwards. Tehudi Wasseran Atra Seneferu, Hotep. Peace. Storm, peace. Oh, who else we got? Jehudi Maat. He said he could hop on, but he might leave out. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be long. So if you want to come on. Yuhuru Drums, okay, I said Sundiata Hotep, Facts Over Personality, I like that name, Facts Over Personality, Philitantis, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm a Star Wars fan, definitely, um, now if, if, now, now, um, you know, they had the, the, uh, war between Star Trek and Star Wars as far as, um, fans, fans of Star Trek and fans of Star Wars, and they always argue back and forth, I know that's back, like, back in the day, and I always told myself, in in the Star Trek um, circle of things, I would definitely be Spock, Mister Spock, because I'm I'm logic all day every day. I would be Vulcan. Yep, I would be Vulcan. I could do my my fingers, you know, like in that Vulcan uh, sign. Uh, let's see who else we got. Tony Macaroni, peace. Uh, Zane, Kofi, brother Kofi. Yeah, it's nice meeting you, Kofi. Man, listen, y'all. Um, I went to the Black Store Bookstore, Cultural Bookstore uh, and Cultural Center, and met up with uh, Brother Kofi, met up with the Brother Sean, the Brother Chavis, the Brother Unk, uh, Brother Vance, uh, who else was there? Uh, Brother Kent was there, Kofi's wife. Um, 
Am I missing anybody else? I hope I'm not missing. Oh, uh, Divine Ruler of Quality of Law was there. Um, Emmy Cat, myself, in terms of online crew, you know, who, who you all see online a, fit, a bit. And it was good. It was a good vibe, good build, um, giving presentations on uh, vaccines and things like that. So it was good. So, so check it out because some of the footage is on uh, Facebook. I know I went live and tried to um, capture it, and then um, it's available. So, yeah, it was nice meeting Chavis and met him for the first time. Kofi uh, met him in person for the first time, you know, as far as in person. I met Sean in person before, you know, so – um, but it's good to see everybody, man. Everybody got home safe and, and all that good stuff. Uh, got to do it again when it's warm and, and, and longer, like, like come, come and, um, put together something, uh, give more advanced notice and stuff like that. You know, uh, draw a nice big crowd and stuff like that. Do some presentations. All right. Anyway, um, who else we got? Uh, I don't even see Sean. Maybe Sean didn't come over. Uh, Vyasa Hotep. Y'all know I'm stalling to see if y'all come into the into the on the panel. Uh, let's see. I'm I'm working my way down. I'm trying to see if there's any 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 uh comments that I need to highlight. Okay, Zane says um, no one migrated from the, from the Middle East towards the Nile Valley. People were already there in proximity with Africa. Yes. Um, now in the delta, you do have some 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 trajectories of of uh, groups or or people coming in from the uh, Levant direction, and some coming from the other side, the Libyan direction, and all that stuff. So so it depends on where you are in the timeline of that territory, you're gonna find that people. Um, converge there on the Nile for whatever reasons you know the drying of the Sahara and some other um, events that cause people to move move around and move about we can understand that but Egypt Kemet Sematawi Tawi Khenu um, and all of the names that it's known as Ta Shema'u Ta Mehu Ta Meri Ta Seti that organized polity came from the south. Why would the people of ancient Egypt refer to the south of their land as the beginning? Captured by the word resi and the word kenet, 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 which is the word for forehead. <clears throat> Or the nose, something that protrudes out. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have the word kinti, foremost, kinet, resi, res. That's for the head. I've done many presentations on, on how the body parts of, of the Egyptians relate to their, their geographical orientation. Where the, where the left hand, the word for the left hand is iabet. The word for east is Iabit. So the east was on their left. Unlike today, the east, when we picture our orientation, the east is on our right. The west is on our left. But to them, it was the other way around. The east is on their left. The word for the right hand is Amen or Amenet. And the word for the west is Amenet or Amenetet or Amenetit. That's the word for west. The word for head is res. But guess what? The word for south or what they're facing, the word that they're, the, 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 the territory that they're facing is resi, which is south. And then the word for feet, where their feet are located, is mehu. The word mehu, it, it means, um, it comes from a semantic um, 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 a range of meanings as to be low the feet the foot to be submerged whether it's under when we're speaking in terms of water to be submerged there's a crocodile in ancient uh, egypt known as mehu because crocodiles are known to be submerged underwater that's the feet but guess what 
That's translated as north. Ta Mehu, the northern region. So why would people why would a people refer to the beginning or head of their land as south if they came from the north? Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Throw it in the garbage can. All right. Um, what else? What else? When pro uh, this is Obi Wan Kenobi. When the proto Egyptians migrated up towards the delta, where the Sphinx and pyramids of Giza already built, water damage suggests it was constructed during the wet phase of North Africa. Um, yeah, people like to debate the age of the Sphinx and the pyramids, and you hear in the in those conversations you you'll hear water being brought up and erosions and things like that. And um, we would have to do a um, a literature review of where those arguments are today. Now, I've done this before in the past, but I would need to be update. I would need to update myself on on that um, on those arguments. But when I did look into it and and um, did some uh, work and investigation into it, um, there were arguments for and against um all of that and there were some really good arguments that that refuted some of the claims that were being made um about that but me i would have to revisit that and um i think people should before they before they uh run their mouth about it but review do a literature review of the arguments and look at the evidence follow the evidence um follow the evidence for that definitely follow the evidence for that but in terms of the pyramids um, uh, and things like that, you know, we got text and we have uh, query, queries uh, location, quarry locations and and uh, villages within Egypt where people worked and, and spoke about um, dealing with the pyramid building. They don't have the formulas for how they built it. I see Mika's in the house. So let me uh, quickly get her because I, I definitely have to make uh, in this uh, session. Etim Hotep, Mika. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Cannot hear you. All right. Well, listen, um, I have to make a run. I mean, I have to. Yeah, I have to make a run, but I have to get off here. So I just want to have a quick after party. I gave my thoughts. I was hoping to hear from you all. Um, and maybe some of you all did comment in the chat. And obviously, it'll be documented in the chat of the video. So I'm going to come back and look at it. Um, may come back on later tonight. Matter of fact, um, if somebody else is not live in a topic that I that I um, feel like feel like I can chime in on, then um, I'll, I will do that. But um, if not, then I will we'll go live. I'll go live tonight. And, you know, we can pick up on this conversation or or. Um, Another conversation. Now, I haven't forgotten the conversation about uh, comparing cosmologies, modern cosmology versus Egyptian cosmology. Our modern day cosmology, not versus, I don't like to use versus, but our modern cosmology in comparison to Egyptian cosmology. Haven't forgotten about that conversation. All right. That involves the Big Bang and all that stuff that you all been hearing um, a few weeks ago and things like that. We're going, we're going to really get down and slow the conversation down because that's going to be in several parts. I'm going to have part one. We're going to focus on the Big Bang itself, the Big Bang theory, the modern understanding of the creation of the universe or the origin of the universe or the birth of the universe, however you want to word it to make you feel, feel happy. All right, we're going to focus on that first, get a proper understanding of that because I, 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 I swear I don't think people – who attempt to com to have these conversations don't even know some of the things you think that they should know, you know, um, really. So I think a lot of people be fronting out here. And so, you know, that's going to get, uh, brought to light. So, all right. So I'm going to say, um, peace to everyone. I really appreciate everybody tuning in on, on my, uh, quick, uh, after party from, um, uh, a sorry, Motes presentation. Go check out his presentation on his channel, and then you know, and then come back here and listen to you know my take on those three points. Emiket uh, brought up a fourth point about DNA, so just check it out, and I'll uh, see y'all later on uh, this evening. All right, 
So um, Sharon Hotep. Shem M. Hotep. <laughs>